Good afternoon, girls. Assalamu alaikum. How are you all doing today? Alhamdulillah, I'm good too. Thank you. I'm waiting for you all to join. Uh, 10 attendees so far. Any requests for me to invite? Let me post the meeting details here. Ladies, did you check out the revision sheet which I posted yesterday? It's on MLG and Teams as well. Uh, you may start solving it. We will also solve it, inshallah, during the revision week. Uh, I will also provide you with the uh, answer key for it once you solve it, inshallah. Uh, Layana, I need to check that thing uh, from the assignments video. I shall let you know by evening today, inshallah. And also, please complete the assignments, which will help you, inshallah, as a revision for your mid-years. And any more questions regarding the media syllabus or content or revision sheet or anything? All clear? Yes. Okay, thank you. I will download the attendance at the end of the session, inshallah. So let's start our topic. Uh, we were doing the topic use to reach and freshwater ecosystems, which is chapter 15.5, the last topic from the chapter 15. And this is the last topic we also have for this term, uh, for the syllabus, inshallah, with this will be done. Okay, so let's start with the verse from the Quran. Uh, according to the verse, uh, the meaning of the words is say indeed my prayer and my worship my life and my death are for the sake of Allah the Lord of all the worlds this is the uh, verse from uh, chapter Al-An'am verse 162 so according to which of course uh, the reason why we were made is to worship Allah and uh, we need to fulfill that reason of course whatever we are doing in our life whatever aims and goals we have subhanallah so we need to do that along with pleasing allah so our main aim should be to please allah to follow the quran and the sunnah and our goal should be jannah apart from the various worldly goals and achievements which we have inshallah so once we are uh, working to please allah allah will make our uh, our various things will create ease in our worldly affairs as well inshallah Okay, ladies, so let's start with the objective is to describe and explain about huge cities and freshwater ecosystems and also to explain the adaptations of the freshwater organisms. So uh, let's start with the KWL. What do you see in this picture here? Water and trees. Yes, so you you see a stream uh, as you told me there's water running in a stream and you can see it's surrounded by trees. So can you call it a use tree? You know what is a use tree, ladies? Yes, um, it's a body of water where fresh and salt water mix. Very good. So uh, I, I asked a few of you all of you to research and a few of you also sent me a research about the use study so i will give you time now further in this lesson now in order to explain what are use studies and what your research about it thank you so much layan i want you all to watch a video before we move ahead with the topic and then i will give you time to explain each one of you can talk about uh, for two to three minutes about what is a use study and what you researched about it yes, I you researched about it? Yes. Yes. Lee, who is it? Is it Lean or Layan? Layan. Layan, I'll give you time to speak about it, Speedy. Let me first play this video and after that I'll give you time, okay? Okay, do let me know if the audio is clear. Math and science. In this video, I'd like to... Is it clear? Yes. Okay, so let's watch this video on your studies math and science. In this video, I'd like to talk about the ecosystem called the estuary. An estuary is a body of water that has fresh water entering and is also open to the ocean. It is semi-enclosed coastal body of water and it's connected to the open sea and also the salt water is diluted when fresh water 
from land drains into it. Estuaries have been called the nurseries of the sea because they provide a safe environment for fish and birds and other wildlife to raise their young. Estuaries also have producers called phytoplankton, which help the food chain and provide food for many of the wildlife. Estuaries also help because they filter sediment and pollutants from the water before it flows into the ocean. Estuaries are also important because they buffer the ocean and the land and they can help decrease the effects of flooding and storm surges. Estuaries can be classified according to their geological features. The classifications include coastal plain estuaries, tectonic estuaries, bar-built estuaries, and fjords. Coastal plain estuaries look like valleys with gentle sloping bottoms. Their depth increases towards the river's mouth. This type of estuary is common throughout the world. An example is Tampa Bay in the U.S. Bar-built estuaries are formed when sandbars build up along the coastline and they partially cut off the waters behind them from the sea. Fjord estuaries are narrow with steep sides and are usually straight and long. Fjords are found in areas that have been covered by glaciers. And finally, tectonic estuaries are created when the sea fills in a hole or basin that's formed from sinking land. San Francisco Bay is a good example. So there we go, estuaries, the nurseries of the world, places where fresh and salt water mix together what plant and animals love. Thanks for watching, and Moo Moo Math uploads a new map. Okay, ladies. So that was a very good video explaining about what are estuaries or estuaries, however you want to pronounce it. So we know that, uh, as you also told me at the beginning of the topic today, that it is a place where the sea water and the fresh water they mix. Now, yes, you tell me what you researched about uh, about the uh, estuaries and what you want to talk about it starting with whom who wants um, to talk first Leon? yes okay and then i'll give a chance to lana musa and lean and i believe so sent it to me so i'll present it so that you can talk about it yeah lan go ahead go ahead speedy. okay um the estuary is a body of water where fresh and salt water mix um and it's also a semi-enclosed body of water um with an opening to ocean and it can be fed by fresh water mm -hmm. and um, they provide a safe environment for um, wildlife youngs. Yes. Um, and also um, um, they have the plankton which can help the food chain and providing foods for many animals living there. Mm -hmm. um, and they are important because they filter the pollutant um, when the water and the ocean get frozen, and also um, they are important because they can um, because they can buffer and protect the ocean and land. And also, um, we can classify the estuaries by four main geologic features, and they are the fjord, barbell, tectonic, and coastal plain. Mm -hmm. Um, the fjord they are um narrow with the steep sides. And the power built are formed with the sandbar, and it's built along the coastlines. And the um, and the coastal plain yesterday they look like valleys with gentle sloping bottoms. And finally, the tectonic yesterday um, they are created when the sea falls in hole, um, and they they will form a sinking land. Yes, that's it, Lion. Yeah. yeah, very well explained, Layan. Yes, pretty much as we just now checked in the video as well. 
uh, as Lan explained and as we watched also, the eucharies are uh, actually the nurseries, as was mentioned here, because it, it, it forms a very good environment for the fishes and also the phytoplanktons and producers. So that is why it is known as the nursery of the uh, ocean. And uh, of course, they they are uh, they help in buffering the uh, the ocean and the uh, land in such a way that it avoids the floods and all. Very good. And also, she spoke about the types of STDs. Very well researched, Layan. Thank you so much, Sviri. Uh, who wants to speak next? Lana Musa, go ahead. You want to present something? You want to speak? I'm going to speak. Eustaries mm -hmm. uh, is partly enclosed body of water and its surrounding coastal habitats where salt water from the ocean typically mixes mixes with fresh water from the river or streams. Um, types of eusteries, a coastal plain eusteries, they're created when their sea level rises and fill in an existing river valley. An example is a che uh, Chesapeake Bay. Uh, second one is tectonic estuaries. They occur where the earth's tectonic plates run into or fold up underneath each other, creating a depressions. Example, San Francisco Bay. The third one is barb uh, are built estuaries is a place where a river's mouth is uh, is at least partially protected from the, the ocean by sandbars or barrier island. Um, example: the Nassau Barrier Beach System on Cape Cod, Massachusetts. The forged uh, forged estuaries. Um, are typically uh, are, are a type of eusteries created by glaciers. They occur when um, glaciers ca uh, carve out a deep, steep val uh, valley, na uh, narrow valley. Glaciers retreat the ocean, rush rushes into a, a, a narrow, deep depression, uh, depression. Example, the Puget Sound. Eusteries contain a rich biodiversity of life. They may they may appear to be just plain mud flat, but if it's filled with life, including bacteria, snails, worms, crabs, fish, selfish, mangroves, seagrass, and birds, these are about 30 species of fish. Use it, uh, a fish uh, uses fisheries at the same stage in their life cycle, including snappers, flounders, mullets, so rockfish, ro uh, red cod, red cod, um, gunnard eel, salmon, and white bait, and sharks. Perfect. That's it, Spiri? Yes. Yeah, very well researched. Thank you so much, Lana, for such information. Uh, yes, as Lana also explained with examples, very good uh, for each and every history. And also she mentioned as to how uh, the life it uh, the, the, these estuaries are suitable for life uh, uh, not only the various types of fishes and organisms but also the the uh, the various trophic levels which depend on the uh, uh, autotrophs like the plant tanks uh, the producers and the plants and also the various consumers which consume so basically it forms life uh, as we discussed in the ocean in the neritic zone similarly the estuaries also they provide home to various kinds of species of fishes and microorganisms which live because of the uh, the conditions which are suitable for them to grow the conditions of fresh as well as the salt water which they mix together thank you so much lana that was very well researched sweetie yeah who wants to speak next please raise your hands Who wants to go next? Lean, you want to speak about it? Um, I was about to, but they mentioned everything. So uh, if I'm going to speak, I'm just going to repeat what they said. So it's fine. It's the same information again, but you, re you research though. Thank you so much. Uh, yesterday, uh, some students sent it to me. I believe Roya did. <clears throat> and who else sent it to me, sweeties? Can you please uh, uh, let me know if I forgot the names, please? I'm going to play about the research submitted by Roya. Roya, are you ready to speak about it? Is she present today?
Sophia. Roy, are you there? Sweetie, you want to speak about it? Hello? You can speak about it, no problem. Is there a problem with your mic, Roya? Do let me know in the chat if there is a problem, problem with your mic, then I'll explain about it. 33 attendees, Roya. You there? Roya? Okay, I believe there's some problem with her mic. I really don't know because I can see her in the class, but she's not speaking. Okay, so this is the research submitted by Roya yesterday with the pictures of the estuaries here. Uh, an estuary is an enclosed coastal water body, as we already discussed, uh, where fresh water from rivers and streams mixes with the salt water from the oceans. So the four types of estuaries are uh, the round river valley, the bar belt, the tectonic and the chord estuaries. Uh, the largest estuary is St. Lawrence River. Okay, this is also uh, one more new information. So as you can see, this is how it meets uh, the, the sea water with the uh, river water like this. It can be like the streams or it can be like this uh, still water. So the freshwater ecosystems are uh, different from the estuaries. They contain only the fresh water, whereas estuaries, they contain a mixture of the ocean water as well as the seawater. Uh, so freshwater ecosystems are like lands and ponds, uh, lakes, ponds, rivers, streams, springs, wetlands, all these are examples of the freshland ecosystems. They are important because they provide us water for drinking, transportation and many jobs for the uh, fishermen because they, uh, they fish for the fishes in these freshwater ecosystems. Yes, that was about the research. Very well researched, Roya. Thank you so much. Let's move on to the next girl. Did anybody else submit to me their research girls? Did I miss out? Please tell me before I move on with the topic. Ladies. As far as I remember, there was one more girl who submitted the research to me apart from Roya. Who was it? Can you please tell me? Hello. You have to speak up when I'm asking you something. That's it. Or did anybody else submit me the research? Can you please tell me so that I may present it now? Ladies, I teach seven classes, so it, it usually uh, I cannot keep a track of so many things. That is why I'm asking you. Uh, let me check myself then. No, I think that's it. Okay, then. So let's uh, get on with our topic. Give me one moment, please. Okay, we got some chat now. My mic does not work, sadly, but thank you, says Roya. Thank you so much, Roya. I understood, maybe. Give me a moment. All right, ladies, uh, so let's get on with our presentation now. OK. So the key concept for this topic is freshwater ecosystems include estuaries as well as flowing and standing water. OK, so all these they come under the freshwater ecosystems itself, be it estuaries or be it uh, the standing water in the pools or the flowing water in the form of streams. All these can be considered as the freshwater ecosystems as well. So uh, estuaries are dynamic environments where rivers flow into the ocean. Why are we calling them dynamic is they provide life to a variety of species because the environment is suitable for the not only for the producers, the plant, the plants at the producer level like the phytoplanktons, but also for the other trophic levels which depend on these producers for their food. OK, so the, as the environment is uh, 
uh, uh, very much suitable for these species to grow. It is known as the dynamic environment. Okay, and Eustery is a partially enclosed body of water. It is a mixture of fresh water with salt water and it, uh, the examples are the, uh, what is it? Chesapeake and also Louisiana Bay House. Uh, so all these are the examples of the Eustery's which are, I believe these are found in uh, US or around that area. Okay, so why are these eusteries dynamic? The environments where rivers flow into the ocean is known as the eustery and the area where a river flows into an ocean is called a eustery. So they include many different ecosystems such as the salt marshes, the mud flats, the open water, the mangrove forests and tidal pools. All these can be uh, uh, can be considered as a different ecosystems into which the eusteries are included okay because of the combination of the fresh water and the salt water you can see many diverse varieties of ecosystems forming here the eusteries are sometimes called nurseries of the sea why are they called as nurseries of the sea ladies as we also watched in the video just now because they provide a safe place for Wildlife yes, because they provide safe place for a variety of, of species to breed and for the young ones to grow. Uh, so that is that they, they uh, provide a safe and also suitable environment for the various species to breed, be it uh, small larvae and all the types of aquatic animals and microorganisms. And that is why it is known as the nursery of the sea. So just like a nursery center takes care of the babies, the eusteries are very important areas where many different species of ocean organisms raise their young ones. So it provides a safe environment, meaning uh, uh, you think there are not a lot of predators in this uh, in the eusteries like the large fishes like sharks and all and the big, big fishes are not present in the eusteries. Is it true or no? Yes. I think there aren't many predators in the estuaries. Yes, there aren't many predators because uh, predators are normally present in the, uh, uh, as we discussed, in the in the narrative zones of the oceans and the big oceans and uh, seas. And in this particular area, it's only the uh, microorganisms in the first two three uh, trophic levels, which are not too much. So that is why it is a safe place for the. Uh, for the various species to uh, to bring about their young ones because they are there is no uh, no fear from the predators eating them up so that is why it is a safe place it is known as a nursery center in order to raise most of the young ones of the aquatic organisms okay ladies that is why we are describing you studies as dynamic because they are also providing many many ecosystems like the uh, salt marshes the mud flats uh, uh, the open water, the mangrove forest. So they are talking about the estuaries at various places which form these many types of ecosystems. You know what a mangrove forest, ladies? What a mangrove forest? Do they do they grow in the uh, water? Yes. Yes. So this is how the mangrove forests look like. OK, so they they grow in the water. They are also a type of ecosystem and uh, they also are uh, a very good type of ecosystem for the fishes and all to grow because uh, it is a symbiotic kind of relationship. We can say the plants growing in the water, getting their nutrition from the water, whereas the various fishes which are present in the water, they get their food from the roots of these forest okay so this is how the various mangrove forests they grow in the water so this type of an ecosystem is also present in the eusteries itself similarly the various other ecosystems mentioned over here like the uh, salt marshes now what are salt marshes ladies why then the term salt marshes has been used in order to describe this type of ecosystem
this is how the salt marshes they look like okay again it is a uh, uh, i can say it is not entirely a fresh water but it is uh, this is how the salt marshes they form and it is a very good uh, 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 we can say the type of water which is present it is very good for vegetation for the crops to grow okay and uh, why the term salt marshes ladies why is the term used as salt marshes for this type of ecosystem maybe according it, to you maybe it contains um high levels of salt mm -hmm. which is a kind of a nutrition for the plants to grow you think Yes, I think that is one of the reasons. Let's also see. The salt marshes are coastal wetlands that are flooded and drained by the salt water brought in by the tides. So they are the marshy. They are marshy because the soil may be composed of deep mud and peat. Peat is made up of decomposing plant matter that is often severe feet, uh, several feet thick. So peat is waterlogged, root filled, and very spongy. Okay, so basically the salt marshes, they not only consist of, they are very high in salt, as Lean just now mentioned, because of the uh, flooding and draining of the salt water because of the high tides. And also the area over there, it consists of mud and peat. Mud, we all know what is mud, but peat is a decomposing plant matter, which is very rich in nutrients. Okay, so this kind of an area, it is very, very nutritious for the various types of plants and crops to grow. Okay, as you can see, so this is how it looks like and uh, you know of the various crops which grow, which grow partly in the water as well like this. So that is why the name given as salt marshes. It is very high in salt as well as uh, the nutrition provided by the dead plants and dead and decomposing plants. Okay, ladies, so we all know what is open water and the mud flats would obviously be mud which is present in which also a lot of plants grow. Okay, because uh, you will see a lot of plants also grow in the mud, uh, getting their nutrition from there. But they also contain a little water from these eusteries. And yeah, that's about it. Okay, so that is why the eusteries are dynamic because they are not only providing the uh, safe environment for the various species to grow, for the babies of the various uh, water organisms to grow, but also they are providing nutrition for the variety of ecosystem, for the forest to grow, for the plants to grow. Then that is why this eusteries are, are considered as dynamic and also safe. All right, so what are the characteristics of the eusteries? Now, we know that uh, the fresh water from the rivers, it mixes with the salt water from the oceans in the used to environments, isn't it? So they are rich in nutrients that wash in from the land. And the eusteries have great biodiversity. As we just now uh, checked the biodiversity, a lot of species are present in the eusteries. Why? Because of the autotrophs, the producers present in, in there and the producers and the various other uh, animals which depend on the producers also live there. And as it is a safe environment, many water organisms that reproduce in the eusteries. And why? Because they are rich in nutrients because it is a water which is washed from the land in the rain water plus it is also mixing with the sea water so it is a water which is very rich in nutrients for the phytoplanktons to grow and obviously wherever there are phytoplanktons there is habitat and there are many many water animals living in that area and also the migrating birds use used cities as stops along their migration paths you know the birds they migrate from one place to another depending upon the season and also uh, depending upon the availability of the food so when these birds they are migrating from one place to another they stop at the used cities why because obviously you see a lot of uh, biodiversity there there are a lot of water animals growing in the used cities so in order to uh, prey on those uh, types of fishes or water animals the migrating birds they also stop at these used to these as the as their migration paths so they stop for some uh, for certain time near these used to these till they are uh, they also get their nutrition from there and then they move on and on to their migration path okay and used to these they provide a protected area where many different species lay eggs and rise there 
young, as we discussed about this already. Youth studies uh, provide the very protected environment for the young ones of various species to grow, as there are not many predators, there is no danger for them uh, from the big fishes and the uh, uh, the sharks and the various other uh, big uh, type of organisms, the water aquatic organisms, which live only in the oceans and seas. They do not uh, live in these used to the environments. So it is only the small, the phytoplanktons and the zooplanktons and the small kind of fishes and the water aquatic animals which are breeding and they are bringing up their young ones. So it, it provides a very safe environment. Okay, so these are the characteristic features of the Eustodes. Of course, it is a mixture of the seawater and the salt water and is very, very rich in nutrients because it contains the water flooded from the land. Uh, and that is why it contains great biodiversity. Okay, so here you can see how the birds are migrating and they stop near the Eustodes in between their migration path. The Eustodes are highly productive ecosystems. They provide a protected refuge for many species, uh, meaning the birds, migrating birds, they stop at the use studies and also they are spawning grounds, meaning the various uh, uh, aquatic organisms, they breed, they bring up their young ones in these use studies and that is why they are known as spawning grounds and they are primarily threatened by the land development. Uh, why are the use studies being threatened now by the land development ladies? Uh, maybe due to air pollution. Yes, Billy, Lynn, what did you say? Could you please repeat? I was saying due to the factories that release harmful chemicals, they may pollute the water in the estuaries, also um, the human activities. Mm -hmm. Like human activities, like yes, maybe the chemicals uh, from the various factories and industries, they might be polluting the water in the eustuaries. And what are the other effects? Global warming and climate change. Mm -hmm. Yes. So basically, because of the irresponsible. Uh, habits of the man or uh, the irresponsible activities that we are doing because of the various types of pollution that used to these are getting threatened these days. Uh, also because of the eutrophication can also happen to this used to these. Uh, eutrophication meaning uh, whenever these pesticides from the uh, agricultural crops and all whenever we are spraying on them. So these nearby used to these near the crops, uh, so the pesticide water, they get it get mixed up with the water in the used to these. And it forms, uh, it leads to the formation of an algae on top of the lakes or the streams or any kind of use to these. Okay, so this algae formation, what does it do? The algae which are uh, growing on these uh, use to these, they they absorb the oxygen present in those used to these so that the actual organisms, the aquatic organisms living in this used to these, they are devoid of oxygen because most of the oxygen is absorbed by the algae. So slowly the algae, they form a lot from the top layer to uh, most of the water and most of the oxygen is absorbed and the various fishes and the aquatic organisms which are living in the used to these, they start dying and this is how ultimately the used to these, they dry up. Okay, so this is also one of the uh, uh, processes which is happening, which is known as eutrophication because of the pollution caused by the humans itself. Okay, so this is eutrophication. This is how it happens. You can see this is the formation of algae. Uh, so once this algae stops forming, it not only causes the water uh, pollution over here in this area, but due to eutrophication, this algae starts absorbing the oxygen present in that particular lake or stream or the used to be so that the, uh, the various aquatic animals or the organisms living, they get devoid of oxygen. They, they start dying and ultimately the entire used to be, it gets dried up because of this pollution. This mainly happens because of the uh, the pesticides and the insecticides which are sprayed onto the crops and they mix up with the water due to the rain when it gets uh, the rainwater gets flooded into these uh, used trees and this is how the algae is formed and finally the uh, the entire used tree it gets dried up. 
So this process is known as eutrophication. So similarly, there are uh, many, many threats to the use studies these days because of the human uh, uh, pollution, because of the various pollutions which we are doing and uh, the various things which are leading to the threatening of the various fresh water and or ecosystems and also the used trees which are getting polluted and uh, land development also uh, threatened by land development meaning if they are uh, sometimes they also use up that land they try to uh, cover up the entire used study or the lake and then they try to use that land in order to construct something okay due to that also the threatenies uh, the used trees are getting threatened these days Okay, ladies, any questions about the use trees uh, no. from the topic we covered so far? Is it clear? Do you have any questions? It's clear. It's clear? Yes. It's clear. Okay. Okay, so let me quickly summarize as to what we covered so far before we move on because we have only three minutes left. Okay, so we studied today about what actually are used trees and uh, freshwater ecosystems. So freshwater ecosystems include the used cities as well as many other uh, lakes and rivers and streams and ponds, all of which would con which contain the fresh water. And used cities are considered as dynamic environments where rivers they flow into the oceans. So used city is a partially enclosed body of water. It is a mixture of fresh water and the salt water. Uh, the examples are the uh, Chesapeake Bay and the Louisiana Bay out. All these are examples of estuaries. They are considered dynamic. Why? Because uh, they are uh, they are they include many different types of ecosystems, such as salt marshes and mud flats and uh, the mangrove forests. All of them they grow. And not only that, they are considered as nurseries. Why? Because many of the sea animals they uh, they uh, also uh, produce and they bring up the young ones in these uh, safe environment because it is considered as safe in order to nurse their young ones. That is why it is uh, also considered as a nursery as different species of ocean organisms they rise their young ones in the oosteries. And the characteristics of these oosteries are uh, they contain both salt and fresh water and they are very very rich in nutrients that wash off from the land uh, during the rain and also they contain Due to this presence of the various nutrients because of the richness on the nutrients, there is great biodiversity in the eustodes and also the migrating birds, they use eustodes as stops along their migration paths and uh, of course it is a protected area uh, for various uh, aquatic organisms in order to nurse and bring their young ones, bring up their young ones or raise their young ones. Okay, ladies, so uh, in this uh, slide, we can see as to how the migrating birds, they are stopping at the eustodes for their nutrition. And also the eustodes are being threatened by the land development and because of the pollution which is being caused by the, by the, by, by us, by the mankind. Uh, not only are they causing the, uh, the type of uh, various types of air pollution due to which we can uh, experience global warming today and various extreme changes in the climate, but we are also causing a threat to the used trees and various other uh, freshwater ecosystems. We will discuss about the used trees protect coastlines about this in our next class, inshallah. Do you have any questions or doubts so far, ladies? No. All clear? Yes. All right. Then please complete your MLG assignments and uh, you may also research about this if you want to speak about it in our next class, inshallah. You may research about how the youth studies are protecting the coastlines. Uh, you, the ones who research already may not, again, the other girls who want to talk about it, you may uh, Google about this information or also study from the textbook the information which we have and speak about it in our next class, inshallah. Okay, then please complete your MLG assignments and take very good care of yourselves until we meet next time, inshallah. You yeah, have a lovely day ahead. Yes, Laya? Attendance, yes. I I'm downloading the attendance. Thank you so much for reminding me. Yes, I've downloaded 31 attendees. Thank you, ladies. You have a, lov you have a lovely day ahead. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. You may leave the session. Bye bye.